Hello, Don in London. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. In my case, the substance was alcohol, and my behaviour could be equally addictive around people, places, and things. So these days, just trying to find a bit of balance in each day. And today, I'm going to share from the uh, 12 and 12, the 12 steps and 12 traditions of Alcoholics Anonymous, a fellowship of human beings keeping sober one day at a time. So it's simply a one day program. And from the 12 and 12, I'll be reading out step 5. So, step 1 we admitted we were powerless over alcohol and life became unmanageable when we drank, and it would do again if we did. Step 2 came to believe our power greater than us could restore us to sanity, and the higher power is as an individual, me, can choose. So, I choose truth, love, and wisdom as my higher power, and some call that God. But it's your higher power which counts. And then, step three, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we un understood it. So I hand it over to the truth of now, love, how to love and be loved back, keep on learning that, and the wisdom which comes from other people. And step four was, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. So we looked at the past, sorted out what were our assets and liabilities and then in step five admitted to God that's to the universe in my case or as you come to believe for yourself just admitted it to God to ourselves and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs so that's what I'm going to read out today step five and if anything occurs to me along the way then I shall add in so step five again admitted to God, to ourselves and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs and uh, I would actually also say secrets keep us stuck so the more we are secretive about what we did in the past the more stuck we can be with the fear of being found out so step 5 all of AA's 12 steps ask us to go contrary to our natural desires they deflate, deflate our egos when it comes to ego deflation, few steps are harder to take than five. But scarcely any step is more necessary to long time, long time sobriety and peace of mind. AA experience has taught us we cannot live alone with our pressing problems and the character defects which cause or aggravate them. And in my case, my primary defects, fear, putting on a brave face and ego, which keeps it all locked inside me. So fear of being found out, putting on the brave face, saying yes everything's fine, and my ego saying if I let anybody in I might fall apart and they could destroy me. So that's just me. If we have swept the searchlight of step four back and forth over our careers and it has revealed in stark relief those experiences we'd rather not remember, if we have come to know wrong thinking, know how wrong thinking and action, have hurt us and others, then the need to stop living by ourselves with those tormenting ghosts of yesterday gets more urgent than ever. We have to talk to somebody about them. So, confession is good for the soul, as long as we find a trusted, a trusted person who we can share what's gone on, then we have an opportunity to get out of our secrets which have kept us stuck. So, intense, though it is fear so intense though it is, fear, it is our fear and reluctance to do this that many AAs at first try to bypass step 5. We search for an easier way which usually consists of the general and fairly painless admission that when we, when we drank we were sometimes bad actors. Then for good measure we had dramatic descriptions of that part of our drinking behaviour which our friends probably knew about anyway. But of the things which really bother and harm us, we say nothing. Certain distressing and humiliating memories we tell ourselves ought not to be shared with anyone. These will remain our secret, not a soul must ever know. We hope they'll go to the grave with us. And that's it, we bury and try and hide what really burns us. And if we actually admit it out loud to ourselves, to God and another human being, as we choose, then we are aiming for freedom, freedom of choice and freedom of fear. Yet if AA's experience 
means anything at all this is not only unwise that is to keep them buried but it is it but is actually a perilous resolve few muddled attitudes have caused us more trouble than holding holding back on step five some people are unable to stay sober at all others will relapse periodically until they really clean house even AA old timers sober for years often pay dearly for skimping this step they will tell how they tried to carry the load alone how much they su suffered from irritability anxiety remorse and depression and how unconsciously seeking relief they s would sometimes accuse even their best friends of the very character defects they themselves were co trying to conceal they always discovered that relief never came by confessing the sins of other people everybody had to confess his own and that's most important the 12 step program especially step 4 gives us a toolkit to judge our own behavior and look at our past but it also gives us the opportunity to become quite expert and professional in, un in unearthing other people's character defects so the real problem <coughs> is if we are feeling wrong about ourselves then we can look to the wrong in others so when we see the defect of character in other people which anger is it's because we've got them too how else would we spot them yes carrying on they would sometimes accuse even their best friends of the very character de defects they themselves were trying to conceal they always discovered that relief never came by confess confessing the sins of other people everybody had to confess his own the practice of admitting one's defects to another person is of course very ancient it has been validated in every century and it characterizes the lives of all spiritually centered and truly religious people but today religion is by no means the sole advocate of this saving principle psychiatrists and psychologists point out the deep need every human being has for practical insight and knowledge of his own personality flaws and for a discussion of them with an understanding and trustworthy person so far as alcoholics are concerned AA would go even further most of us would declare that without a fearless admission of our defects to another human being we could not stay sober it seems plain that the grace of God will not enter to expel our destructive obsessions until we are willing to try this and this is trying to let go of all those secrets all those hardships all those burning feelings that come about where shame and guilt is involved with past behavior what we are likely to receive from what are we likely to receive from step five for one thing we shall get rid of that terrible sense of isolation we've always had almost without exception alcoholics are tortured by loneliness even before our drinking got bad and people began to cut us off nearly all of us suffered, suffered the feeling that we didn't quite belong and I felt that for a long long time either we were shy and dared not draw near others or we were apt to be noisy good, f good fellows craving attention and companionship but, it, but never getting it or at least to our way of thinking there was always that mysterious barrier we could never neither surmount nor understand it was as if we were actors on a stage suddenly realizing that we did not know a single line of our parts that's one reason we loved alcohol too well it did let us act extem extemporaneously but even then back as boomeranglers back we were finally stepped down and left in terrified loneliness and for me one of my careers kept me m well actually I picked careers which would actually move me about the country or other countries so that I would be involved with people during the day and be very extrovert and sometimes socially be very extrovert by drinking always putting on an act but always trying to live to truth and learn wisdom from others and never really sure about love so it was very hard to connect and say listen I'm just learning how to be myself I didn't know how to do that because in my early life cover up don't let people know what's going on it's the family secrets and all the rest of it we don't talk about ourselves and we don't talk about our feelings so goodness me it's, is it any wonder that secrets abound and I didn't know how to behave 
I suppose, and keep on learning how to behave and learn my feelings. Learn about why my feelings were there, why I had them, and it all got to extremes because drink either made it possible to be sociable or it made me want to isolate and hide away. So step five, unlocking the door and letting it all out meant it was okay to not know my feelings, not know what was going on for me, not, not so sure about the truth of what's really going on and how to interact with people. I mean, I was very good at acting and putting on a brave face, but when it actually came down to expressing my feelings of love, especially in relationships with the, the fair sex, well, I was always scared that I wouldn't be good enough and I always tried harder to be perfect until I became a very trying human. Anyway, continuing, and it's this terrifying loneliness that I can remember, long nights of writing poetry, drinking myself into oblivion and then waking up in the morning thinking, what on earth did I do last night? Carrying on, when we reached AA and for the first time in our lives stood among people who seemed to understand the sense of belonging was tremendously exciting. We thought the isolation problem had been solved, but we soon discovered that while we weren't alone any more in a social sense, we still suffered many of the old pangs of anxious apartness. Until we had talked with complete candour of our conflicts and had, had listened to someone else do the same thing, we still didn't belong. Step five was the answer. It was the beginning of true kinship with man and God. And I emphasize again, it's the God of your understanding, or what God means to you. So I'll just say again, my work, my understanding is very much what I've learned so far. It's the truth of now, how to love and be in love back, and wisdom which I get from others. So truth, love and wisdom, as I understand it, is God in my life. And that's a tremendously bigger and higher power than me maybe the ultimate power is I don't know I couldn't define it but who could defi define nature the universe and everything so this vital step was also the means by which we began to get the feeling that we could be forgiven no matter what we had thought or done often it was while working on this step with our sponsors or spiritual advisors that we first felt truly able to forgive others no matter how deeply we felt they had wronged us our moral inventory had persuaded us that all round forgiveness was desirable, but it was only when we absolutely tackled step five that we, the, that we inwardly knew we'd be able to receive forgiveness and give it too. And that's it. You know, if we actually start to develop, well, do you develop humility? We do develop the ability to learn again. And with humility, we can find good conscience. And with humility, we make progress because it's all about learning and learning means that we have to forgive old attitudes and behaviors or we find ourselves stuck yet again judging ourselves so harshly that we won't forgive ourselves which means that we can judge and never forgive anybody else so it's a two-way street always forgiveness of self and others for whatever it was because if we are stuck we are stuck and we can't move on. Another great dividend we may expect from confiding our defects to another human being is humility, a word often misunderstood. To those who have made progress in AA, it amounts to a clear recognition of what and who we really are, followed by a sincere attempt to become what we could be. Therefore, our first practical move towards humility must consist of recognizing our deficiencies and what we did. No defect can be corrected unless we clearly see what it is, but we shall have to do more than see. Knowing is not enough, it's what we do next. The objective look at ourselves we achieved in step four was, after all, only a look. All of us saw, for example, that we lacked honesty and tolerance, that we were beset at times by attacks of self-pity or delusions or personal grandeur. In other words, we could go down into the de depths of depression and think we were the absolute answer to everything that's going on in the world. And if you've ever watched the news and thought to yourself, why on earth are those people doing what they're doing? 
what would I do in that situation or what would I do if I were in power we all have an attitude of how it should be or could be but then again don't all those people who are struggling with it have their own attitudes and opinions too so we have to ask ourselves why are we judging what can we do in terms of action for ourselves and others around us carrying on the objective look at, look at ourselves we achieved in step 4 was after all only a look but while this was a humiliating experience it didn't necessarily mean that we had yet acquired much actual humility though now recognized our defects were still there something had to be done about them and we soon found that we could not wish them or will them away by ourselves so in other words we're stuck with the problem until we actually take some action and share about it more realism and therefore more honesty about ourselves are the great gains we make under the influence of step five as we took inventory we began to suspect how much trouble self-delusion had been causing us this had brought a disturbing reflection if all our lives we had more or less fooled ourselves how could we know to how could we now be sh so sure that we weren't still self-deceived how could we be certain that we had made a true catalogue of our defects and had really admitted them even to ourselves because we were still bothered by fear self-pity and hurt feelings it was probable we couldn't appraise ourselves fairly, fairly at all too much guilt and remorse might cause us to dramatize and exaggerate our shortcomings and you know shortcomings are not enough of something so not enough truth in my life not enough love, a real understanding of love and not enough wisdom coming from other people our anger and hurt pride might be the smokescreen under which we were still hiding some of our defects while we blamed others for them possibly too we were still handicapped by many liabilities great and small we had never, never knew we had so the problem with doing a self appraisal and finding out what the, de the assets and liabilities are sometimes we unearth more than we ever thought and they can come in all different categories based on sharing our life experience and what went on hence it was the most evident that a solitary self-appraisal and the admission of our defects based, based upon that alone wouldn't, nearly, wouldn't be nearly enough we had to have outside help if we were to study to know and admit the truth about ourselves the help of God and, other, and another human being only by discussing ourselves holding back nothing only by being willing to take advice and accept direction could we set foot on the road to straight thinking solid honesty and genuine humility and you know truth is bigger than anyone what we have inside is an opinion based on what we see of the truth what we see of what is around us but it is self-serving so we see it through our own eyes and what step five does we share it and we see it through the eyes of another person and then we start to actually ask ourselves in good conscience what went on not to blame anyone but to find out why it happened and would we like to change what happens next so it's all about the next step yet many of us still hung back we said why can't God as we understand him tell us where we are astray if the Creator gave us our lives in the first place then he must know in every detail where we have since gone wrong why don't we make our admissions to him directly why do we need to bring anyone, in, anyone else into this how else will we find truth, love and wisdom because if we only have our own point of view of truth, love and wisdom surely that is just narrowed by our life experience what we need is a broader understanding of how our life experience fits with truth, love and wisdom so at this stage the differences of trying to deal rightly with God by ourselves are twofold though we may at first be startled to realize that God knows all about us we are apt to get used to that quite quickly somehow being alone with God doesn't seem as embarrassing as facing up to another person until we actually sit down and talk aloud about what we have so long hidden our willingness to clean house is still largely theoretical when we are honest with another person it confirms that we have been honest with ourselves and with God so it's letting up and letting go of the secrets that kept us stuck in old behavior 
feeling angry and resentful and possibly going back for another venture into drinking the second difficulty is this what comes to us alone may be garbled by our own rationalization and wishful thinking and this is also about prayer and meditation which comes later in the in the program if you like but for me it's also part of every day prayer and meditation if we ask for things which are selfish or rather than asking for generally let's have a good day everybody let us all have a good day and see how we may fit together that would be better than saying dear God please make it so it doesn't work like that the benefit of talking to another person is that we can get his direct comment and counsel on our situation God working through people and there can be no doubt in our minds what that advice is going it alone in spiritual matters is dangerous because we only get our opinion and not the truth how many times have we heard well-intentioned people claim the guidance of God when it was all too plain that they were so, so, sorely mistaken lacking both practice and humility they had deluded themselves and were able to justify the most arrant nonsense on the ground that, that this was what God had told them absolutely absolutely right because our own personal opinion is not what God tells us we have a good conscience which says in the big picture of life how might it be it's not about what I deserve or think I deserve because that is a personal personal desire it, it's what does this situation need what do I need to learn from it how do I fit in become part of it and move forward and progress it is worth noting that people of very high spiritual development almost always is, insist on checking with friends or spiritual advisors the guidance they feel they have received from God. Yes, because that's why we have a fellowship, or it's why we have uh, different religious beliefs, different faiths, different systems of, of understanding about how to live life. And it's all about understanding from a bigger perspective than one person. So even the most spiritually involved in a particular faith or belief system check out what's going on surely then a novice ought not to lay himself open to the chance of making foolish perhaps tragic blunders in this, fa in this fashion while the comment or advice of others may be by no means infallible it is likely to be far more specific than any direct guidance we may receive while we are still so inexperienced in establishing contact with a power greater than ourselves and you know the power greater than ourselves is all around us all the time it's always in the now so the spiritual connection to living for me just for me you work it work it out for yourself your own personal way spiritual is everything about now it's living in the present moment ever present in perfectly perfect moment of now and the power greater than me is everything around me so I have to keep my senses alert to what is going on and not have my head closed down thinking it's all about me because it's not yeah while the comments or advice of others may be my, by no means infallible it is likely to be far more specific than any direct guidance we may receive while we are still so inexperienced in establishing contact with a power greater than ourselves our next problem will be to discover the person in whom we are to confide here we ought to take much care remembering that prudence is a virtue which carries a high rating prudence is a virtue which carries a high rating perhaps we shall need to share with this person facts about ourselves which no others ought to know we shall want to speak with someone who is experienced who not only has stayed dry but has been able to surmount other serious difficulties difficulties perhaps like our own this person may turn out to be one sponsor but not necessarily so if you have a develop if you have developed a high confidence in him and his temperament and problems are close to your own then such a choice will be good besides your sponsor already has the advantage of knowing something about your case now for me it was a bit different because my way into the fellowship was tormented and fragmented and all my life most of the work that I did was based on learning the truth, love and wisdom of now 
it wasn't religious but it was based on principles of integrity open mindedness, fair dealing and honesty and I thought I was a fairly honest person outwardly in the sense of out there in the big world commercially I had very strong principles and they got tormented and I got tormented and I had to struggle because people didn't li live, live to the ethics I felt were right as one person said to me how can I be your friend when your standards are so high and I didn't realize I was very forgiving of others not judgmental either but looking at to be a problem solver and a consultant but along with that I carried the burden always inside as a confidence with everybody and I had no confessor so what did I do? I took a bottle of vodka and drank it it's far too often to cover and push down all the feelings of torment about what I knew and couldn't do anything with so I was a good candidate but my torment and aggravation and getting into the fellowship was all about me knowing better than you I had to stop it I didn't know better than you and I didn't know better than other people when it came to sobriety and sorting out the secrets which underpinned my downfall anyway carrying on so my first confessor yes well before well before the fellowship and then as the fellow my, in, my sort of introduction into the proper fellowship of AA that is me properly attending and being a part of my sponsor I suppose was not actually in AA although he knew all about it and we did our step I did my step four with him and I shared my secrets with him at least I thought they were secrets I was very surprised to find out that most people knew me inside out and everything I'd done which was a surprise and a relief anyway carry on with step five our next problem was to be to discover the person in whom we are to confide yes perhaps though your relation to him is such that you would care to reveal only a part of your story if this is the situation by all means do so for you ought to make a beginning as soon as you can yeah confession is blinking good for the soul for me anyway I have to say me because I don't want to impose my views or opinions on you it's what appears and becomes the truth for you not for me I've got my truth and it keeps on changing every day as people tell me and share with me about what I do and my actions it may turn out however that you'll choose someone else for, for the difficult and deeper revelations this individual may be entirely outside of AA for example your clergyman or your doctor for some of us a complete stranger may prove the best bet and again it's about getting it out of those so we can deal with it and get some reflection so I had doctor, psychiatrist, psychologist, psychoanalyst you name it along the way before fellowship for me because I was involved in helping people and what I didn't realize is it was far better and easier to look at other people than look at me and even when I went, went and was involved in all the processes to try and understand me I always put myself as a I sort of separated my insides from my outsides so I shared in a general way about what was me but never the personal torment of loneliness and fear I'm glad I do now because it's okay to be lonely and fearful and then when we say it and express it in a fellowship meeting for me or express it to a friend in fellowship I'm no longer lonely and I'm no longer fearful because they're on my side because there aren't any sides after all the real test of the situation are your own willingness to confide and your full confidence in the one with whom you share you, your first accurate self-survey even when you've found the person it frequently takes great resolution to approach him or her no one ought to say the AA program requires willpower no willpower here is one place you may require all you've got that is the will to speak the truth and let the secrets out which are burning and keeping us stuck happily though the chances are that you will be in for a very pleasant surprise when your mission is carefully explained and it is seen by the recipient of your confidence how helpful he can really be 
the conversation will start easily and will soon become eager. Before long, your listener may well tell a story or two about himself, which will place you even more at ease. Providing you hold back nothing, your sense of relief will mount, will mount from minute to minute. The damned up emotions of the years break out of their confinement and miraculously vanish as soon as they are exposed. As the pain subsides, a healing tranquility takes place. And when humility and serenity are so combined, this is the humility is about learning and being human and right sized, and serenity are so combined, that is acceptance of oneself, accepting myself as I am. So assets and liabilities and letting out the secrets I'm human again and I can start afresh and if we do this daily it means we're not building up mountains of trouble for the future like we did in the past yes and when humility and serenity are so combined something else of great moment is apt to occur many an AA once agnostic or atheist tells us that it was during this stage of step 5 that he first actually felt the presence of God or in my case the presence of nature and providence through truth, love and wisdom being shared a greater collective of good conscience and that for me is God truth, love and wisdom that's just me so please it's about finding out for yourself what will work for you and God is as we believe I don't know that anybody can define God and that's not the answer it's about how we make most of life with freedom and interdependence with our fellows. And even those who had faith already often become conscious of God as they never were before. And it's about a, a sense of belonging to the human race, I guess. It's a feeling of inclusion. This feeling of being at one with God and man, this emerging from isolation through the open and honest sharing of our terrible burden of guilt brings us to a resting place where we may prepare ourselves for the following steps towards a full and meaningful sobriety. And that's step five. I mean, when you think about it, step four takes a while to do because it's doing a fearless moral inven inventory of ourselves. It's, sh it's showing up what worked for us and what didn't work for us in the past unearthing those feelings and secrets that were keeping us stuck and then step five sharing them with another human being is quite an order but we do it and what do we find take the alcohol away and there's still a lot to do and without alcohol we don't have to hide cover up suppress we actually chew on our feelings a lot because they're new to us you know we have extremes of feeling extremes of anger and resentment extremes of joyfulness but then it's it's new to us and then gradually through time our feelings start to come somewhere in the middle and we start to feel life as it is life on life's terms today so that's it step five a shorter reading than step four thank goodness you may be saying but step five really is a gateway it's letting it all out and saying to ourselves okay we are human what is this thing called forgiveness? If I forgive myself, I can't judge others. I may judge what is right for me, but judging others and their behaviour, and then saying it's all your fault and no forgiveness, means that we get stuck on five, and then we go backwards to four, and we can be half a person with half our feelings. So step five, we start to say, it's okay to feel everything, life on life's term, let's live in reality let's have our conscious contact with a higher power, good conscience the inner voice within us which says, ok so what's the big picture of this and if I work hard with freedom to make some good choices, what can I do today so, there we go at the end of these videos I share the serenity prayer as you come to understand God this is how it works for me God Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference for me is always in the moment and just for today.